You've interviewed a lot of rock and rollers. Yes. What can guys in rock and roll, whether it's the guys in the 90s, whether it's the new generation of, of, of you know, indie rock, whatever, what can they teach actors? Because the two are different, and I think actors are kind of afraid of rock and roll. Mm hmm Because it's raw and it's scary, and people don't use a filter. They tell you what they think. Yeah. Most of the time. yeah. <laughs> what can actors learn? from these rock and rollers. You know, that's exactly it. What you just said is what I've noticed, the difference between musicians, rock and roll musicians and actors, whether you are famous or not, they eat, live, and breathe it. If you see some dude walking down Sunset, you can tell by the way he's dressed that he plays in a band, that he's some crazy rock and roll guitarist. You know, he's got bandanas on and bracelets and some eyeliner. And it's 2 o'clock on a Tuesday afternoon and he's going to the grocery store, but he doesn't leave his house unless he looks like that. And it's such an embodiment, I've noticed, like with, with rock and roll, with the music lifestyles, it's such an embodiment of your brand, right, of who you are, of your marketing, of what you're putting out there. Um, and that's something with us as actors, there's a little bit of a challenge in a really finding out what is your brand and what is your marketing and and you know I see I see progressions of people over time that it's a natural progression when they come to their brand and who they are and then I see people where you're like you're doing what didn't you just have you know black hair and now you have blonde hair and you, you know like you know what I mean like just different completely like 360 changes and you're like woo um, so maybe that's not an authentic change rather than like a progression of like into your brand. But with like the rock and roll musicians, it's, 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 it's an embodiment. It's a live, breathe. I just read, and it's, it's amazing that I just read. Um, Guns N' Roses is one of my all-time favorite bands. And I just read Reckless Road, which was a biography. And by just, I mean like a week ago. Um, it was uh, written by Mark Cantor who his family is here, they own Cantor's Deli, um, very, very famous family in the Hollywood area, who was the best of friends with Axel slash Izzy Duff Steven back in like day one. And what he did, I guess it's been out for less than 10 years, probably more like five years, he had saved. He had done a lot of photos. He was taking a lot of photos at the time and even some recordings. And he had saved like every ticket stub, every flyer, every everything. And the ones he didn't, he went to like the group of collective. And so he put this book together and it's kind of like a scrapbook. It's like this huge photo scrapbook, but then, you know, with text and stories in between. And it was such an amazing story to see like how it all came about from the moment they all finally join the same band to like, you know, this disaster, that disaster, to then record labels banging down their door, to them then getting like, they they were they were all completely homeless paupers and then all of a sudden they got in advance and they all got like $30,000 each. And the, the, in the book he talks about how like, Axel, they wouldn't let him open a bank account with his, with Axl Rose, with the name Axl Rose, and so he refused to open a bank account and had like $30,000 in his sock like that night at like, you know, a show that they did. And it was just like amazing to listen to like all the behind the scenes stuff um, and, and the magic that goes along. But you know what, which ties back into what we were just talking about is that as an actor, you're almost always solo, you know? As a rock star, you have your band, you have your family, hopefully, you know. Sometimes there's solo acts and sometimes disastrous breakups occur, but you have a team of like four to five people and everyone has their strengths and weaknesses. And so, you know, maybe you're the promoter, maybe you're the one that schedules, you know, everything. Maybe you're the one that has the steady job and the money that supports the project. Um, as actors, we're, we're solo a lot, you know, like it's, you know, we're, our, we are really our only competition, you know, at the end of the day, when it comes down to it, there's a gazillion of one actors and actresses out there and there's a gazillion of one roles, but when the role's right for you, it's yours. Um, but at the same time, you don't have anyone kicking you in their pants saying it's time to go to rehearsal because there's like four other people waiting for you. You have to make those things happen on your own. And 
So it's always good to get like those little groups together, kind of form your own band, I guess. I need to form my band. Maybe that's what I'm not doing quite right. I need, I need, want to join band? <laughs> well, what can musicians learn from actors? I don't know, I think I'd rather be a rock star. I mean, there's a lot of similarities um, with the self-marketing and the promotion. Um, do you think they're more disciplined or do you think that there's a lot of rock and roll or, or whatever genre music, but that they're all disciplined if they're really serious about No, I mean, I think it goes either way. I mean, there's like, it depends on the person, you know, because there's, there's actor friends of mine that I know that call themselves actors and you're like, what are you doing? You're not, you, you have no body of work, you have no classes, you, you don't, you go to parties. Um, you know what I mean? Like, but, but you're an actor, um, especially here in Hollywood. Maybe not so much in other cities, but here in Hollywood, when you first come in, when you're first, when you're first in your first Hollywood class and you start meeting people in, outside in social circles and clubs and bars and whatnot, you're going to meet people who say they're an actor or a musician or a writer or this or that. Um, so I guess at least on the band side of things, at least if someone's out there actively performing and playing shows, you know, there's some kind of tangibleness to it. As an actor, it's hard to have that tangibleness because you can't just go, I mean, you could go find like an open mic night somewhere and do things like that. But I think maybe musicians have it a little easier in that aspect of that there's way more avenues for them to get their talent seen and get out there and find out if they, you know, if people are receptive to their talent. Um, you know, similar to doing a play, but yet that's still a process. And gosh, I don't know, Karen. There's so many like crazy odds and ends and, and similarities, but yet differences. And like at the end of the day, though, it's it's really individually whether you're an actor, a musician, writer, or whatever. You've got to be putting in the work, and you've got to be doing it, and you've got to get out there. Um, Maybe there's more of a chance in this day and age for musicians to make money because they can go to iTunes and they can sell, you know, at the indie level, they can still sell copies of their albums and whatnot. Um, as an actor, I've been trying to figure out what my product is, you know, I'm like, if I had a product, what could I sell, you know? Um, it feels really cheesy to like, you know, hey, buy my t-shirt, <laughs> you know, with my face on it or something, you know, but a band can do that, you know, and a band can go to iTunes and put up their, their music. So I think maybe in that aspect, they have it a little easier as far as getting like a financial flow income at this level, um, where as an actor, what do you sell? You put up your demo reel, you put up your headshots, but that's really cheesy if you've got like some kind of website and, you know, buy my headshot for a dollar or something like that. I don't know. <laughs>